This is one of those kinds of things where, you know, on the one hand, at Obama's inauguration back in, uh, in 2009, he um, mentioned non-believers, and he was the first sitting president to do so in his remarks. Um, that He did not do so um, in uh, this year. And uh, in fact, if you watch the inauguration, it was sort of rife with, um, you know, very exclusionary uh, theological language that for people who are non-theists, religious non-theists, um, or, uh, you know, non-religious non-theists, they uh, were likely to not feel that their perspective was represented in this kind of thing. It was the combination of not, not only there not being a non-religious, non-theistic sort of presence there, and also this very exclusionary language. So um, I think on the one hand, the word that you used was theonormativity. Right. Um, so do you wanna sure. <laughs> there so, we go. <laughs> like like heteronormativity, <laughs> theonormativity is this assumption that um, it basically it's it like like um, uh, any kind of privilege, religious privilege or specifically theistic privilege, um, makes people blind to the fact that they are able to do say and do things that other people cannot, and. Um, you look at a lot of these events like the inauguration and you see um, that you know it is not only seen as perfectly acceptable to say exclusionary things if they are cloaked in theological language but in fact it's seen by many as a very positive thing um, that being American means being a believer in God and on the one hand, you know, I'm very encouraged by all of the progress that has been made in terms of um, the sort of circle expanding in American life to include LGBT folks, but I, I am also concerned that um, for LGBT folks to, to sort of specifically talk about LGBT folks, that if you are an LGBT person and you are not a believer, then you are not seen even in many LGBT circles as being um, a part of the conversation. Um, even at, at a number of LGBT conferences where there are interfaith type of programs, um, I have been really surprised that there is not only often an absence of non-religious or non-theistic perspectives, but um, resistance to the idea of even including them.